three times the price of it. Other products. So last year, yeah. One of my shows is fun. It moves. It's fun. Fun is coral.
Good morning. Welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday of Easter. So glad that you're worshiping with us. Welcome to those of you worshiping with us online. We're glad that you're joining with us as well. In the Spirit's embrace, you're loved, welcomed, and wanted here. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Friends, if you could be seated, and kids, if you want to come up, we are doing children's time away at the beginning of the service today. So if you want to come up and join me up here, come on up, friends. How are you? Thumbs up? Oh, awesome. Hey, everybody. Welcome. All right. So before we do our children's time, we have something important to do in our service. So you may remember on Easter, we had these beautiful new banners. Uh, they were a gift from, from the Burmeister family and also from the Hoffs who uh, gave us the labor to do them. So we have these beautiful banners. But what we're going to do today is we're going to ask God to bless their use and our worship. So can you join me? Let's pray. O oh Lord, our God, we thank you for your love embodied in the labor of those who made these banners, and we dedicate them to your service. Lord, we know all we possess comes from your loving hand. Use us and our resources as you will, always to your glory and to the welfare of your people. Amen. All right, so I have a question. What did we just do just now? What was going on there? Anybody have any idea? We were praying. Yes, we were praying. What were we doing in that prayer? Anybody know? Yeah? We prayed for the good use of the banners. Yeah, what we were doing in there is we were asking God's blessing on something in our worship. We were asking God to, to bless these beautiful new banners we have. And that's one of the things that we do in our worship. We offer blessing. We, offer, uh, we pray to God and ask God's blessing. And sometimes it's on a, a person or, or maybe something we're going to do. Maybe if we're going to do a big activity as a church, we ask God to bless that event. And sometimes we ask God's blessing on a thing, like a, a thing we see in our worship and that we use. And we have a fancy name in our worship for the blessing. It's called the benediction. Can you say that? The benediction. Yeah, and benedictions or blessings are an important part of our worship. Because in them, we pray and we ask God to be with us during our worship and during uh, the service that we do in God's name. And so today we have these beautiful banners, and we, we, we offered this blessing for them uh, in our worship, but we do this a lot. We do this, say, uh, if somebody new comes to our church and they join our church, we offer a blessing and introduce them to the congregation, or if someone's leaving our church sometimes because they're moving or going on to something else, we'll ask God to bless them as they go to the next place. So blessings or benediction are an important part of our service. Now, I realize most of you are gone at the end of the service because you go to uh, because you go to our faith formation time for kids, but do you know what the last thing is we do in church? You forgot? Do you know what the last thing is we do in church? We offer a benediction. We offer a blessing on everyone here as we go out to live our lives, in, as our Christian lives in the world. So blessings and benediction are an important part of this. And the beautiful thing is, when we ask God to, to be with us in, in our worship and in our service, where do you think God is? Do you think God stays far away? No, God promises to come close and to be with us. So the next time we offer a blessing in the service for a person or a thing or a group of people, think about that, that God is promising to be with us in our worship and in our lives. And let's thank God for that. Dear God, thank you that you're close to us. Thank you for the many gifts that you give us. Let us use them for you. Amen. All right, so there are treats. I don't have an acolyte, so here is the snack basket. 
Help yourselves. Here you guys go. There you go. All right. There you go. There you go, bud. Okay, you got it? Awesome. Please stand as you're able. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in our trespasses and sin and made us alive together with Christ. It is by grace that you've been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Please join me in the prayer of the day. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Acts. 
The next day the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. Now it has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading the psalm responsibly. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The second reading is from the book of First John. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need, and yet refuses to help. Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. By this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired man, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So they will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
Please be seated. Let's pray. Gracious God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of each and every one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> this morning, the lectionary brings us to what is probably, arguably, the most familiar and oft-quoted part of our scriptures, Psalm 23. And at the heart of the psalm, there's a key phrase that speaks to what this psalm is all about. Though I walk through the darkest valley. A phrase which is then expanded upon when the psalmist states, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And while many of us associate this psalm with death, probably due to its frequent use at funerals and memorials, and the fact that it is most famously translated, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, That's not really the best rendering of the Hebrew. Rather, it speaks in a more idiomatic way to a dangerous place. So while it encompasses the experience of death, it speaks to the greater human experience of suffering. That suffering is universal, unavoidable. The constant reality of the pain, distress, and hardships that pervade the human experience, that pervade our lives. It's something we know all too well from illness to death, from the cruelty of that one person or that one group that they can impose upon another, from depression to moral dilemmas to the ravages of the natural world from fires to famine. A huge range of experiences, but all devastating. And my friends, all certain. And in this psalm, the psalmist speaks to this suffering that we all understand, that we all know, And the psalmist does not minimize it or tell us to dismiss it or downplay it, but rather says that when we face it, to not fear, to not despair. Why? Because in the midst of these very real, powerful, and evil experiences, the psalmist reminds us that God is there. God does not cause them. God does not bring them to bear on us. But when they inevitably happen, God is there with us, acting for us, and providing support for us. The psalmist deals with this reality using two metaphors. In verses 1 through 4, God is presented as a shepherd. And in verses 5 through 6, God is presented as a host. The psalm begins, the Lord is my shepherd. In one little phrase, the psalmist conjures up strong images for us. The image of shepherd is one that was used in the ancient Near Eastern world to speak of kings. And Israel was no exception. We find this throughout the Old Testament scriptures. David, to whom the psalm is attributed, was what before he became king? A shepherd, the protector and defender of his family's sheep. The very role he would then serve to do for Israel as their king. And St. John tells us that Jesus once said to a crowd, I am the good shepherd. And in saying this, he picks up on this image, embodied in this psalm, a powerful image that invokes in us a reminder about the God that we experience in Jesus, that God is the one who takes care of us, like a shepherd cares for his sheep. My friends, this is an analogy of devotion, of dependence, of loving concern, Reminding us in the midst of the trials of life of a God who prepares good things for us. And the second part of the psalm says to us that this God, this good shepherd, is also a great host. A concerned friend, laying down a rich banquet for us, providing life at its best. And walking with us, comforting us. Not just in some future sense, but right now, in the midst of evil in the midst of pain, in the midst of trying times, in life suffering. God with us. God for us. That, my friends, is who and what God is. A good shepherd and a good host. Our good shepherd and our good host. That is what faith in the God come to us in Jesus does for us. Why it is so important. For it readies us. 
and sustains us for the inevitable realities of life. For our faith, our trust in Jesus is in one who says to us, I am the good shepherd. And more to the point, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Faith in Jesus, our good shepherd, centers us on a God of vast and unconditional love, a God of justice, a God of mercy, and a God of compassion. And it reminds us that God understands, that God knows what it is like to suffer, to feel the pain of the world, the rejection and the hate, the pain and death itself. Because in Jesus, God entered into the totality of our experience, lived with us, loved with us, suffered with us, and died with us. We all understand the reality of suffering. It may be different for each and every one of us, but the common experience is unescapable. On one level, we all understand. And in the midst of the actuality, I want to remind you that the Good Shepherd says to us today and every day, Though we are walking through the darkest valley, fear no evil, for I am with you, I love you, I will comfort you, and my friends, I understand. I understand the pain, the loss, and the tears, but in the midst of these things, trust and hope, for God has given us the assurance that goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Or in the words of St. Paul, in all of these things, we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
Please stand as together we firm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. O God, it is your will to hold both heaven and earth in a single peace. Let the design of your great love shine on the waste of our wraths and sorrows and give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. We pray for those who lead the church, Elizabeth, Bishops Elizabeth Eaton and Ann Edison Albright, Pastors Mary and Ryan, and those in seminary, Sarah Bauer, Peter Peregrine, and Chip Wood. Give them strength and energy to fulfill the work to which you have called them. Cover each mind, body, and spirit with your powerful protection. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of peace, we offer prayers for those who are affected by turmoil and chaos of war. We pray that world leaders will bring harmony between nations and for wars to end. May we find peace alongside one another respectfully, allowing for mutual flourishing. God of grace, hear our prayer. We come before you now lifting our siblings in Christ who are named on the prayer list, those serving in the military, living their call overseas, and in need of your healing, peace, and wholeness. Provide your loving care to those whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. We pray for the friends and families of our saints in rest, Phyllis Anderson, Richard Francor, David Hines, Bill Schmidt, Walt Rugland, and Marianne Wentland. May they rest in eternal peace. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of that peace with those around you.
Please stand as we continue with the offertory prayer. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is to heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all are welcome. And children and faith formation leaders, if you want to come forward for communion first, you can leave for your classes after that.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray together. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. Uh, first, I'm sure as you came in this morning, you noticed that beautiful table that was laid in the gathering area. I'm sorry to say that is not your coffee hour. Um, <laughs> however, there is coffee out there. But if you would like to see those tables laden with food, come back this afternoon. Uh, at 3 o'clock, the choir will be performing Mozart's Requiem here at the downtown site. It will be with the choir and orchestra. And there will be a Viennese tea reception that follows the concert. So join us at 3, and for those of you watching at home, you can join online as well. It will be live-streamed. Uh, from homelessness to coming home, pillars provide shelter support and solutions to address housing needs in our community. And so today, as I mentioned a bit ago, we are taking a special offering for pillars. There is a box in the back corner on your way out of the doors in the sanctuary. Uh, if you have your pillars offering, your special offering for them, please drop it off as you leave today. Next Sunday, a farewell coffee for Jeannie Gronholm will take place between the services at the downtown site. Stop by to wish her well on her next adventure and enjoy a treat. Uh, please join us in welcoming John Hakes to the First English staff. Uh, John is going to take on the role of Worship and Accounts Payable Administrative Assistant. That was Jeannie's role. He uh, has actually already begun, so if you come to the office, he is working with Jeannie for a couple weeks to... Uh, to glean some of her valuable information. And uh, so please join me in welcoming me. If you see John between services, uh, welcome him to the staff. And the end of year faith formation party is coming up next Sunday. So mark your calendars for the start. Uh, and then with that, mark your calendars for the start of faith formation for 24-25. Uh, Rally Sunday is on September 8th. So we'll resume our, our studies, uh, our faith formation studies on the 8th. And uh, for the next month, though, and from now and through May, there will be children's choir. So if you enjoy doing children's choir, uh, we'll still dismiss you uh, at when it's time for communion, and you can do children's choir, but faith formation will be over as of next week with the party. To learn more about everything happening at First English, check out the website, the announcements, and the newsletter. And as you're able, please stand and receive the benediction. Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.